piece and it's getting hard to see the comb surface, it's a good time to start thinking about splitting your hive and particularly when it comes to the springtime. Bees really do breed up. Now this frame here is one we have harvested or actually my sister Mira here, it's her hive. Thanks for, uh, for being on show and tell today. <laughs> and here we have uh, a frame that's just been harvested last night and you can see they're chewing away the capping but they haven't chewed it all the way yet. If you have a look in this corner they've already chewed away and fixed up the cells and even started depositing nectar again already. And as the bees need it, they'll chew all the capping away, recycle that wax and continue to fill it. And here's the color of honey that came out of that frame last night. And this is the color of the honey that came out last week when we were harvesting the fresh new tuckaroo that's been coming in in the last month. So isn't it great to see these different colors and different tastes coming in in the different frames and being able to isolate them. So to do a hive split, I'm going to take you through what you'll need to do and what you'll need to think about. So the aim of the game here is to end up with two hives, both with the resources to have a functioning queen. Now, in the bottom box here, we've got a queen. We've got a lot of brood, we've got uh, a lot of larvae, and hopefully we've got bee eggs down cells. Now what we're going to do today is what's called a walk away split where we don't need to come back and put a queen into the hive. We'll talk a bit more about that later. So all we need to do is get some frames out of this box and put them into this box, put some fresh ones back in this box, and that way if the frames we put in here have some bee eggs or very young larva down the cells, the bees can actually make a queen from that. So that's an important thing. If the bees don't have the resources to make a queen, then they won't make one. The other type of split is where you're actually putting in a queen that you can buy in the mail. You can buy a mated queen off a queen breeder and insert. We're not doing that today. We're doing the type of split where we're just letting the bees naturally raise their own queen. The next thing to think about is the bees and how they geolocate to a certain spot. So if you just take frames out of this box and move it over there, all the returning bees are going to come to back to this hive. So that's an important thing to think about. So what we've actually just done is we got this hive here and we moved it over. So the original flight path was actually here where the new split is. And what I like to do is give the weaker colony, the one with less resources, the lion's share of the flight path coming home. And that way you'll make sure you've got plenty of bees in your new split. So uh, that's an important um, tip as well. There's so many different ways to split hives and there's so many different opinions. In fact, you'll probably find Mira and I will start arguing about different opinions <laughs> of how to do it. Um, that's just what happens in beekeeping. As long as you've got the fundamentals of, of having enough bees and having the resources to make a queen, then you're likely to get a good split. So the next thing to do is to make sure you've got your frames ready. We're going to need eight of them because it's an eight frame box. Now you could split into a smaller size box. Some people split into what's called a nuke box, which is a half size brood box. Today we're going to be splitting into a full size one. The weather's warming up. They're probably going to breed up really quickly. The spring's coming early here in the Southern Hemisphere. And so we're probably going to uh, be fine with a nice uh, full size brood box like this. So you need eight frames because we're going to end up with eight frames in each box. That's important too. You don't want uh, to leave frames out or the bees will create a big mess in your box. Okay, so we've got our smoker. It does tend to um, go out after a little while, so let's just give it a good puff to get it going. And what you're after is some nice, cool smoke. See how it's, it's not really thick smoke yet. We want it going a bit better than that, so we'll keep puffing it. 
If you've got questions, put them in the comments below and after we're, we're well into the split, we'll start answering those and Tracy's going to read them out. She's out surfing at the moment. She's going to uh, put them in by a walkie-talkie. I've got a walkie-talkie under the um, seat here. Roger, see you then. <laughs> so let me know if you could hear Trace then. Um, also, if if you've got answers or, or tips on how how people could um, do it differently, or you've got um, opinions on d different ways of going about splitting, or you know the answer to somebody's question, jump in and start answering those too. So put your comments below, and if you know the answers, help answer questions for people. It's really um, great to see the community really helping each other and it's really how the beekeeping community works around the world is people just jump in and help each other. So you can smoke your hands a little bit if you want to. Um, that just uh, masks your own smell. Some gentle smoke at the front and I usually like to put the nozzle of the smoker right in the entrance and just make sure some goes into the hive. There's different opinions on that as well. And then I'll leave the smoker right at the entrance so the returning bees are getting that, that waft of smoke as they come home and it has that calming effect. Okay, the next thing to do is to get on your protective wear. If you're new to beekeeping, good bee suit gloves is important. And make sure you zip it up. So the bee suit has a zip up the middle and then a zip from either side. Make sure they're well done up. Okay. And I'm going to go gloves off. But if I notice the bees get a little bit uh, aggressive in nature, then I'll put my gloves on. So I have them at the ready. But yeah. if you're new to beekeeping, <laughs> then just... Uh, wear your gloves from the start. Yeah, I used to wear my gloves all the time, but then as I got more comfortable with my bees, I, I prefer not to, because I can maneuver a bit easier. So Fantastic. this hive, like all this week, this hive has having massive orientation flights during the day in mid morning and heaps of drones. So I could kind of see this week that they're building up. There's lots of newly emerging foragers and lots of newly emerging drones that are doing their orientation flight. So that was yet a few more signs that the, the hive is really getting ready to split. What do you think? Will there be queen cells already in the brood box? I don't know. I'd be curious. I, I think it's still a bit early, but they are really, really packed in that side window as well. So um, we might, we might, hopefully, hopefully we've caught them just, just before that moment so that we don't get any swarms, but only one way to find out. Okay, let's begin. So what we're going to do is first of all take the roof off the hive by undoing these wing screws that lock it on and lifting the roof off. We're not going to take the inner cover off this time because there's no need to. The bees can just stay happily in that box, we'll move them aside and that will be less bees we have to deal with when we're taking the split. Now, next thing you'll need is your hive tool and we're going to be taking off the top box. Now, a tip here, the back cover comes off and this becomes a good handle. You can see the beautiful colors of honey coming in there. The box will be quite heavy. There's a lot of honey in there already. We can tell by the, the um, honey that's coming in. We harvested the end of this frame last week and they're just filling it back up again, which is fantastic to see. There's still a flow going and that means there's some nice nectar around, a good time for us to take a split if there's nectar around and more to come as spring goes on. Okay, so the chisel end goes under here. Now, it's all a bit daunting, this is, for a new beekeeper. So if you're feeling concerned about doing this and following these instructions then it's a nice idea to get a friend to come and help you especially if they're experienced in beekeeping but even if they're not just having two of you is handy to uh, to go through this process and also to lift the um, super off so under here you'll see the queen excluder i'm going to go above the excluder to see if i can separate the box from the excluder now you can go above or below 
today I'm going to see if we can go above. So what I'm doing is just loosening. I'm not going to lift it yet. If you could loosen those two corners mirror. And separating that that's it. Loader. So we're just loosening, loosening all the way around. And I think that's going to come off now. I think so, but I'll just hang, hang on to the queen, queen excluder and loosen it if you need. Okay. So the best orientation to lift a box like this is actually in the long ways direction. If you're trying to lift this way, which you can do from these points, it's a lot heavier because the weight hangs out further. So use the handle, stand close to it, and almost use your body to rock back like this. And mirror's just going to chisel it away. You can yep. see it coming away there. Great. And now that's quite comfortable for me, even though it's heavy, because it's leaning against my thighs there. I'm just going to shuffle back and put it down. Now when you put it down, it's a good idea to lean it up against a piece of wood or something on the ground so you're not squashing any bees that are underneath the frames as you put the box down. I'm just going to leave that there. There's a lot of bees in there, though it can happily stay there while we work on the brood box. If you've got questions, put them in the comments and we'll get into it. Now, normally you'd add a little bit of smoke at this point, depending on your bees. Some bees you really don't need any smoke at all. These are sort of in-between bees. Um, if you tuned in last week, they did sting me on the finger. So I'm gonna add a little Didn't smoke. Didn't sting me though. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they, only, <laughs> they don't sting my sister, but she, uh, she sings to them every night. And, um, they're, they're pretty happy with, with Mira. So you notice the tone change as you add the smoke. And you can just wait a little bit for them to settle down. Now because we're doing a split where all we need is the resources from here, bee eggs or young larvae to go into the next box, we don't actually need to find the queen. However, Mira might like to, she <laughs> might want to keep the queen herself and give the split away with the new queen to her friend. I'm not sure what you want to do there. Yeah, if we, if we can find the, the queen, I'd like to keep her. And if we can't, then, then that's the benefit of a walk away split is that you know, one, if they both have resources, it doesn't actually matter. So I'm going to take some frames out of here to give us space. I'll just put them aside for the moment. We haven't got our frame holders on, but we'll put them on now. So these shelf brackets can double as a nice frame rest on the side of the hive, and you'll see how that works in a second. We go on like that. So as we're going, we can just rest a frame here. Does that need to be? A little bit tired, it's nicer. I'll do that with my hand. Got it. Great. I gradually uh, ended up with little like uh, square drive um, <laughs> things on the end of my finger after this many bee boxes. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so. Next, we're going to take this excluder off. Now, bearing in mind that the queen could be on the underside of the excluder. So, we'll make sure to put it at the entrance. And I'm just peeling up slowly and gently. They do stick everything together, bees. So you'll find, and I'm just trying to do it nice and gently. Jarring kind of movements do tend to get your bees more upset. Okay, so that's off there now. I'm going to have a quick look for the queen just in case. And I can't see her there, but to be safe, I'll just lean that right up against the hive entrance. So if she is there, she can crawl home. When she's in egg laying mode, she cannot fly. So you can't expect her to fly back to the hive. Next, we're going to start pulling out frames. Now, this is a question of how you want to make this split, whether you want to do an even split or whether you want to just take some frames out and have a smaller starter hive. I think it just depends what, the, what sort of resources we're seeing. Um, 
I feel like, you know, it depends. Depends how many frames of brood versus how many frames of honey that we're having in the brood box. Okay. Last time I was in there, there was about seven frames of brood. So. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's just uh, have a little smoke. Now I can see there's quite a lot of honey on the edge frame there. You can see bulging honey hmm. already. So it's sometimes useful to add a bit of smoke just to get the bees out of the way. Now we can probably get that frame up. It is a bit bulgy, but let's just start with that end frame, edge frame, and see how we go. First of hmm. all, we'll go sideways. Yeah, <laughs> unsure? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Rather, sometimes it's easier to go for a middle one. Yeah, or the next one over. This one looks nice and straight. Perhaps yeah. we should start there. Yeah, maybe. So I'll still lever them across. Yeah. Okay. So it's important to go sideways first with this chisel just between the end bars of the frames. Because otherwise what you'll find is you'll lever up this end and it'll pull the nails out. Um, because it's the frame's too stuck. Okay, so we've loosened that up. I've got a little friend. Stone. Ah, oh, look at that. There is our bee spy, which is always spotting beautiful moments with the bees. Much of our macro photography comes from Mira's obsession with bees. Pollen pants on. Beautiful little pollen balls collecting that nice yellow pollen. Sometimes you see white, sometimes orange and even blue pollen on the legs. Okay. Go. If you've got questions, put them in the comments. As we go, you can start answering those. Yeah, I can see all the foragers coming back here, Stone. You've got, you've got a lot of, um, a lot of different coloured pollen pants coming back in. Oh, they were. <laughs> <laughs> they were. Let me get out of the flight path. Yeah. Jump out of the flight path and a lot of bees will come home. You can yeah. see the pollen on their hind legs as they're the foragers coming home. And that's because we, we moved the hive over, so they're all coming back to where they think home is. They're geolocated to that spot there at the moment. It's amazing how accurate they are. I know, even just. It's a beautiful thing. So we were pulling out this frame here. So the J goes under the end of the frame and you lift that up. What I usually do is just grab the end of the bar and then move to the other end. So there we go, we've got some brood you can see straight away. Slightly less transparent than the honeycomb, the brood capping. You can see that here. It's more, often the, the brown or beige in nature. And over here you can see a one that sticks out, a bullet shaped uh, one right here and that's a drone a drone brood so worker brood looks like that and drone brood sticks out like a little mound in the frame so there's a drone there you can see the bigger eyes that meet in the middle and they're a bigger bee and that's why they need a bigger cell it's quite easy to tell the difference between drone brood and worker brood we've got some more drones down here sticking out of the comb and also a larger size cell usually above six millimeters in size whereas the worker cells if you compare the size it's more like a, a typical 5.3 millimeter cell some nice pollen stores around the edge of this brood nest as well ah great we can get that in the light there we go oh careful seeds seeds the photography. <laughs> well done, thanks sis. Um, so, very careful with naturally drawn comb. Yeah. I tilted it over to get the photography angle 
and it just started to bend. It started to bend as if it was going to break and because the bees haven't really joined this one up along down the sides here, there's not much bracing on the edge. Um, each comb will be different but that particular comb, I think also because it's got this sort of bend. Good, good. Okay. So what are you seeing there on the other side? We're seeing the worker and uh, worker capped worker brood. Um, we're seeing the pollen up here, but it's it's a bit hard to see in this light. But yeah, there's sort of like a darkish orange pollen, but great amount of stores around the brood nest there. Like that's a great great frame. So it might be good to give this one to the new split because yeah. it's got it's got brood that's going to emerge soon and it's got pollen stores. Yeah. I so would. we'll have a quick look for the queen just because, but we don't have to find her for this type of split. So I'm going to go ahead and get another frame out and have a look what's on it. So I'm just going to pop that in the middle for now. So I'm not sure. I might just take out one of these to give us a bit more space. You can hear the tone of the bees has changed a little bit. It's sort of letting us know they're getting a bit flustered. Getting a little bit flustered. So just giving them a tiny bit more smoke. frames pulled out before. Ah, uh, it's an older frame, is it? Ah, uh, yeah, it's the, the, um, I'll just show you what happened there. So the end bar here just started to lift without the frame. It was already lifted from a previous time. Yeah. So that needs another nail or perhaps a screw through the, the edge. Yeah, I think that's one of the original quite old frames as well, so it might be at some point cycling that one out. So what you do in this case is you push it back down, you lever it across, and try and take the load off that, lever it out from the other end. And lift it from the sidebar. Yeah, lift it from the sidebar if you can. There we go. There you go. Okay, what do we have here? We've got some more brood. So while we're going about this, we're looking at the health of the brood also. Keeping an eye out for sunken dark cappings with a piercing in it that could be signs of AFB or EFB. Okay. Now this one hasn't got Sorry. wires, but it's more well connected so we can tip this one a little bit actually oh yeah i can see eggs so we've got eggs in this patch here that's great so that's what we need the bees can raise a queen from that see if i can see them with this so what we're looking for down the cells is a tiny grain of rice no it's not i've got to tilt up a little bit more to the light it's too hard. To it's too hard with the, <laughs> the with angle. The macro. It's a nice fresh orange pollen as well in here. Beautiful. Nice. So okay. I can see them too down the cells. But see the what looks like a tiny grain of rice in the bottom of the cell. So plenty of eggs on this frame. Yeah. So now already this hive has all it needs to raise its own queen. Now, because we have taken frames out of this hive that could have the queen on it, we also need to make sure this hive left behind, or the main hive, actually has eggs on it as well because they may need to raise a queen from that. Yeah, if we accidentally took her. I haven't seen her yet though. 
Just speak up a little, Miss. Sorry, yeah, I haven't seen her yet. Um, so hopefully I'm going to put them that in the same order as we took it out. Um, shall we have another? Go for another one. Meanwhile, put your questions in the comments below. We'll, we'll get to answering those. And if you've got answers to other people's questions, please jump in there and answer as well. Just added a little bit more smoke where I was working. Going across ways again. Once you've got those first frame out, it's a lot easier. You can even just pick up the frames once you've gone across. So we're not seeing any queen cells, so I think we've definitely gotten to them in time. Here's a bee just emerging from its cell. Just there, it just popped out. Fluffy new little baby bee. Lots of drones here, you can see, very dark. Um, backs on them, almost gold rings, they look amazing. See the bigger, sort of rounder shaped bee with the eyes that touch in the middle. They're the boys. They don't have stingers. They don't do any foraging, but they are important because they spread the genetics from hive to hive. Okay, so this one has, There's some eggs down eggs cells. There as well. yeah. And there's some brood. So it's cat brood, so that one's a good one probably to give to the new hive as well. Oh Guess yeah. The chances. Do you not or, or we could leave it. I, I would say leave it and then we know we've got we know we've got a frame with eggs. Okay, we'll leave that one behind. I wouldn't mind having a look at this one though. Okay. So we're coming across first before we go up. You know, this has got a bit of honey on it, mm. which if you've got a really small colony, I wouldn't give them too much honey just because the hive beetle can take over if you've got hive beetle in your area. I tend to uh, take an opportunity wow so much pollen on this side it's amazing. so much pollen as well and um, brood capped and uncapped all stages actually I can see um, I can see in here you can see the, the larvae developing in the young cells it's amazing what the bees can make isn't it this is incredible so they're workers and then if you look over here you can see that there's drone, these knobbly big ones are drone cells and you can actually see down one of them is not capped yet there. And then yeah, so it's, this is a great frame. Lots of pollen down here as well. Mm. So this hive's doing really well. So we give this one nice pollen stores to the new hive? Sure, it's got lots of um, brood in various stages as well. It's a good sign that that's right to the edge. Beautiful. Go bees. Okay, so each hive has what it needs now to, to go forward. One of them has the queen, it's probably this one left behind. So we could put the rest of the frames in and put the lid on now. But we'll continue because we're exploring, we're having a look and we might give that hive just one more frame. Mm. But that would be an even split then. So it's yep. an eight frame hive. So if you gave it four frames, it would be an even split between the two. So it depends on your strategy, whether you want to go even or whether you want to have a smaller hive and a larger hive. Yeah, I I'm happy to go even, I think. Okay. Given the amount of bees that are in that hive right now. Yeah, okay. You know, I think um, seeing as we pulled out, you know, four frames and they all had brood and eggs and larvae. So 
Okay. Um, so we're going to go for an even split, which half the frames will move there and half will stay behind. Yep. And we're making sure there's eggs on both, which we've already done. So we could give them another frame of brood or another frame of honey, and that will also depend on which hive yeah, becomes I, bigger. I expect this one's probably all honey on the edge there. Yep. Um, we could just smoke in and have a little peek. Oh, I'll just, just add a bit more fuel that to that smoker. When it starts blowing ash, you know that there's it's not running much out of fuel, fuel left. So I'm just putting some more fuel in. Okay, there's lots and lots of bees in this hive. It's looking really healthy. Great time to take a split before spring. And uh, we might open up for questions now. Great, Cedar, thanks. There's a lot of action going on. Fred Dunn's here. He's, people are asking him questions. Hey, asking Fred. Questions. And Fred did notice that you almost, that uh, bit of brood nearly did fall out. Uh, <laughs> Cedar, people thanks, are Fred, for pointing what? that out. <laughs> Silly Rise is asking, you know how now you're putting the brood frames back in? Um, they had a bit of a gap between the, uh, the, the brood frames and the box and then the bees have started building comb. How do you suggest they sort of lay out those frames? Okay, so we will get to that. But basically what you want is to make sure the frames are pressed together and the extra space in your box is split evenly between the two edges. The reason why they need to be pressed together is because the spacing between the frames is important and the bees want to keep that spacing. So if there's too much space like this between them, they'll build comb in there for sure. If you've pressed them all over one side and you've got a big gap there, they'll build comb in there for sure. If you um, split it evenly, the space either side like this, then generally they won't build comb along that edge. Sometimes they will. It really does depend. Bees will be bees and always do different things. Um, but the important thing is to press all your frames together. Make sure there's eight in there if it's an eight frame or ten in there if it's a ten frame box. And press the frames tight together, leaving the space on either side. The eight frames have more space in them than ten frames and that's just the way beekeeping's been done for a long time. The eight frames I find uh, nice once you get going, that extra space you will really appreciate as the bees tend to, to build up in between the frames and, and build out their combs, etc. Having that little bit of extra space is really nice. The 10 frames tend to get a bit tight, in my opinion. So um, leave the space on the edges, press them together, try and make sure it's split either side. Good question. So I just had a little peek. This, this brood frame, this edge frame, actually has got brood and drone brood okay, so on it. So, so they've got brood right to the edges. And this, this is a great frame. It's got brood and larva. It's got all stages. It's got some pollen. So I'm going to keep this one because um, we put quite a lot of pollen into the split already. Sorry, bro, I'm just like taking over. Yeah, go for it, go for it. <laughs> So bees use about one frame of pollen and one frame of honey to raise a frame of brood. So that gives you an idea uh, of how much resources they need to, to build up. And that's why they don't really uh, build up until you've got a big nectar flow, lots of things flowering. And the bees are careful not to, to lay too many eggs. The queen will, will actually reduce her laying in times when there's not much nectar or pollen available because you can't raise brood without those honey and pollen stores. Okay, keep the questions coming. Cedar, um, this is a good one. I'm just wondering, if you're doing a split without a queen cell, how do uh, the bees actually raise a queen cell? Raise their own queen? Okay, that's a good question. So, what happens is they will turn one of those cells with eggs in it into a queen cell by basically enlarging it and building the cell out from the comb and then hanging down. We don't have an example of a queen cell yet, but as spring goes There's on... There's our queen, sorry. There we go, we'll spot her, the queen. Yeah. She is oh, down right down the bottom. 
Bit camera shy. Bit camera shy. So then what happens is the bees will feed that larva royal jelly. Oh, she's very camera shy. So, and they'll continue to feed her royal jelly where as on day about three of a larva's life, they normally feed them plant proteins from the pollen. And that is what changes them from, changes the genetics from being a queen to a worker. So in effect, they all start off on their path to being a queen, but as soon as they're, they're fed those plant proteins, it switches off those genetics and, and they turn into a worker. So, uh, but without that egg to start with, or at least a very young larvae under three days old, they can't raise a queen. So that's the importance if you're doing a walk away split like this, to making sure you've got eggs on the frames. And we know the queen's in here. Yeah. But you don't necessarily have to find the queen. Now, if you were introducing so, a queen, you okay. would. You'd need to know which box to add the queen to. So if you were introducing a queen, it's slightly more difficult because you've got to learn how to spot the queen before you can make a split. And in this case, Mira's found the queen, so she could then come in a day later and add the queen to this hive. Most people wait a day because that hive has then realised it hasn't got a queen and less likely to ball or attack the new queen you're putting into the hive. So I'm just going to have a peek at this last frame. Okay, we're doing a full inspection to see what's in every single frame in this hive. Because I haven't well, done an inspection, full inspection for a while, so... It's a good thing to do. The important part of beekeeping is to get through your hive, get through every frame and check for disease and any issues. And uh, that way, make sure you're keeping healthy bees in your apiary. So, houses. Lots and lots of pollen and a little bit of brood. Yeah, there's a bit of festooning happening on this side. It's like they're trying to draw out more comb on this edge. So they probably are, as they get more packed, they'll take any opportunity to build a little bit more comb wherever they can, even on top of the frame bars like you're seeing. Yeah, look, they're kind of building out and festooning to try and make more comb on that side. Mm. Lots of bees there. So we've got a little bit of capped brood. Lots of drones on this frame. My goodness. Look at them, it's a sea of boys. <laughs> sort of a boys club in the corner of boys the Boys club here. in the corner, absolutely. <laughs> Look at that. Look at them all. Wow. <laughs> Look at that, all those shiny big eyes touching in the middle. Yeah, that's the easiest way to spot them really, isn't it? Those big eyes that touch in the middle, whereas the workers don't. So... That's got a lot of pollen stores. You could perhaps put that into the new hive. Yeah, it's a lot of drones. I'm actually, I'm tempted to put this one. Okay. That far edge into the new hive. Okay, while you're doing that, I'll keep answering some questions. Sure. Cedar, what's your um, opinion on using a water sugar spray instead of using the smoker? Okay, I have, I have tried um, water spray, but I haven't actually tried the sugar spray. The, um, when I tried the water spray, I actually used it on a very aggressive hive and it really didn't help at all. <laughs> and I was, I was uh, running for my smoker. So, um, so that didn't work, but I'm interested to know does, if anyone watching uses the sugar spray technique, but basically, it, what it does is you're spraying sugar water in a typical spray bottle and those little droplets of sugar land on the bees and they, they spend time cleaning themselves and drinking up that sugar water rather than getting aggressive towards you as you're working your bees. Some people say it works quite nicely, some people put uh, different essences in the, in the water or the, the sugar water as well. Um, so let us know if you've got experience with that and how you find it. Great. So a couple of people were just wondering why, why would you split a hive? 
So the reason why we're splitting a hive is so we get two. That's the primary reason here. She yeah. wants to give a hive to a friend. So Mira's, this hive has a home already, so we're taking a split. But the other reason is bees naturally build up. If they've got a good season, we've got lots of resources, they'll naturally build up and divide themselves. And that's called a swarm. What happens is half the bees kick out the queen and they fly off and they find a new home somewhere. So that can be a bit of a loss because you've lost half your bees and you didn't end up with them in another box and they flew down the road and perhaps even if you're in an urban environment that could annoy your neighbours etc. So taking a split in spring or when you see your hive really packed is a good idea. Other things you can do is add more boxes to give them more space but in the end you want some nice frames like this in the brood box, empty, ready to go for the bees to, to draw out with their comb and provide some fresh space for the queen to lay. And that'll reduce those swarming tendencies. So splitting the hive is my favourite because you get another colony, whereas if you let them swarm, you're not guaranteed to catch them. You may or you, you may not. Um, and uh, I prefer just to take a split than to try and get in there and hack off queen cells like, um, like is, is a popular thing to do in the world as well. So we've got another boys club happening here and a lot of drones as well, like drone cells, so ready to emerge almost. If you see here in this area, you're looking at uh, the drones. They look like little mountains coming out where as the worker brood is more flush with the comb surface, closer to looking like honeycomb, but has a less transparent uh, capping. So these are the drone cells in this area. So there's very little honey on this frame. So in fact, there's very little honey in this brood nest. We, okay. we had brood from edge to edge, which for me is another indicator that perfect time to make a split. Yeah. And we've split now before they've even started thinking about splitting themselves. There's no so queen cells on these frames. I'm going to pop this one in here. Which is a shame because we don't get to show you what they look like, but also good because in, in a way we've, we've beat the bees to it and we've, we've uh, helped them have new space in both of these hives to get busy laying and you'll find that neither of these hives are likely to swarm this season. So how long will it take do you think for them to raise a new queen in that um, box you've just split? So that's a, that's a good question. Mm. So the, the queen is a 16 days which is shorter than a worker which is 21 days so they try and fast track it because it's critical for a hive to get a laying queen so if you've got an egg in there they're raising a queen from then it'll be 16 days before the queen emerges now there's still some time beyond that because she doesn't just walk out of her cell and start laying she's got to go on some mating flights one or two mating flights usually and she will actually uh, wait for a good day to do that. So if the weather's bad, you could be waiting another week. Uh, if, there's, if there's good weather, then the Virgin Queen will, will leave the hive, fly off and mate on the wing with drones from other hives in the surrounding area. Return to the hive with, with sperm from perhaps 30 drones and she might go and do that again, get another another um, a lot of genetics from another 30 drones and she'll bring that back into the hive and start laying shortly after that. So it can take um, potentially even uh, a, a month before she's laying. I wouldn't bother looking for a laying queen till about the one month mark or perhaps three weeks if you're getting really eager. Cedar, if, um is it alright to just leave that split so close to the other hive or will the bees start to get a little bit confused as to which one's their home? Okay, great question and we talked about this earlier. What we did is got the main hive which was situated right here and we moved it across. So that means the returning foragers think that this is their hive. And the reason why we did that is because this new split we've made will be naturally weaker than the main hive and we wanted to make sure that our new split got a healthy amount of forages. So by doing this, you, you can shuffle them as you like, but what you want to see is bees coming and going from both hives. If one of them isn't getting any traffic, 
then move the, the weaker one into the flight path just by shuffling them over a little bit. And that way you can make sure one of them doesn't just reduce in numbers and get really weak. What are your thoughts, Cedar, about where to put the empty frames? I was thinking that because I know this is mostly drone brood and honey, that I yep. would stick one in between there. Not a bad idea. So what I would generally do is keep, keep a main brood nest in the middle where you've got a lot of brood on the frames. Keep those frames together in the middle, especially if you're still getting cold nights. Mm. And if you've got honey or, or no brood on a frame, then you can checkerboard it and put a fresh frame in between. So Mira's pointed out we could do that right here now, levering this across, and moving this frame to the other side of this one. Yeah, and I'm going to do the same thing on this one. This edge frame here was um, largely honey and a bit of pollen and mostly drones and not much brood. So just to give them... And the reason why you might want to do that is they'll be a bit quicker to start drawing on this frame, but that also the two frames on either side act as a guide and if you're doing uh, foundationless frames like this, letting the bees naturally draw their comb, then having a guide either side will keep them nice and straight. It also often uh, a wall of pollen and like a drone frame that often has a lot of pollen or honey on it can be a bit of a wall for the queen. Um, so by, by putting that frame in the middle we, we're giving her a the bees room to draw drone, I mean worker brood, so that we end up with more workers and a stronger colony. Sometimes when she hits that wall of pollen she won't go further. So I'm popping that one in there. Peter, if you were doing a split, could you just add another brood box instead, or is the, as you said the main reason is to get another hive? You can certainly just add another brood box, give them some more space, uh, put some fresh frames like this right in the, in the brood nest, and that would alleviate those swarming tendencies. And that's a popular thing to do as well. Lots of people run bigger colonies with multiple brood boxes or multiple supers, especially in those colder areas where the springtime tends to happen all at once, or the flowering season is compressed into a short amount of time, then the bees uh, can really build up and store a lot of honey. And conventionally, the mentality was store the, the honey on the hives and then process it all at once at the end of that big flow or, or at the end of the season. With the flow hive, you can just keep tapping the honey off as the season goes, so you don't necessarily have to run so many boxes. But if you want space for a bigger colony, you'll need to add another, another brood box or another super. We've got um, a little bee, bee bridge going on here. Okay, the, <laughs> they've noticed space. So this is why it's important not to have space between the frames. That if you le left a space like this, the bees, as they're already starting to do, will start building bridges of comb across there and you'll end up with a whole mess to clean up. So always put the right amount of frames in there. Sometimes you get into that situation where you don't have one and you've caught a swarm or whatever and it's important to get back in there really quickly and put that frame because it's surprising how quickly bees will actually build comb when there's plenty of space in the hive like that. How long do you think it'll be Cedar before um, that split that you've done will be ready to add the super? Uh, because we've got a good spring coming, if they, if they do well and produce a nice queen quite quickly and get laying, then we could be adding a super in, um, in even mid-spring here. It really d just depends. Other times you have not so good luck and you even need to try again by giving them more resources to make a queen if they don't successfully do so. Excuse me bees. So what I'm going to do is just move these across. So we're pulling them across and oh, we're going to share the space out. I'm just going to put this one on the edge like this and we're trying to make it even uh, between the two sides here. There's a generous amount of space on the edge. We want to make sure it's distributed evenly between the two. 
Yeah, so I'm doing the same thing for this hive. I'm a bit got more space on one side than the other, so I'm just bringing my hive tool in, pushing everything over Bye. and sort of centre, basically. I want to do a little bit of smoke, get that. Um, a few people have noticed the queen excluder that we use on yeah, the flow so hive. Yeah, got even do space you have either side. For the plastic or the metal queen excluder? You know, I do because I find the metal ones, ant colonies build up in the rim around the edge. And that's probably the main reason that I use the plastic ones. But yeah, metal ones can be good too. Just bearing in mind that um, if you bend the metal ones, or if you bend them by yanking them up like that, they're hard to get back into a working condition again, whereas the plastic just springs back. So if you bent the metal, then the queen can get through and you wouldn't know. So, but the, the, the metal ones do, do um, feel more robust in a way. So um, I'd be happy with either, really. And do you think different queen excluders have different size gaps for the bees? They shouldn't. You, what you want is a 4.3 millimetre opening. And that's the size that the workers can comfortably get through, but the queen can't. So if you're getting one that has bigger gaps than that, then you might find that queens, especially when they're young, will sneak through too easily and end up laying in your supers rather than in the brood box. So you can see even looking at these two colonies that you can see that this one has more bees, you know? Like you were saying, that's the slightly weaker one that we made the split from. And because we found the queen, we know that the queen is in here. Um, and that was a deliberate choice that I made to keep my original queen and let the split I'm giving to my friend um, grow a new queen and again like Cedar said if I check back in a few weeks and we're not seeing signs of them raising a queen what we could go do is give another frame of, of brood with young larvae and eggs for them to have another go um, or I could choose to order a queen online and introduce a queen okay um, so do you want to put the super back on this one yeah let's put the hives back together so if we if we uh, smoke around the rim there to get the bees to, to uh, <laughs> go back down if we can. Back down you go bees. Okay, now we'll seize the opportunity while there's not too many bees on the top there. We'll bend down, lift up this box. Now, watch out bees, watch out. Trying to place it nice and square like that. Then you usually push it into line just by pushing before they wax it all up. And how are we looking? Yeah, could come a little bit. A little bit over this way. A little bit over this way. Okay. And a little bit back. There we go. Now the next one doesn't have a super yet, so all we're going to be doing is putting an inner cover on that. <laughs> where is the inner? I've lost the... Oh, there it is. <laughs> and... Like, where is the inner cover? We can put this roof back on. There Hang we on, have just, it. Just seen a... Oh, she flew off. <laughs> that was a... Another moment to catch. <laughs> I can't help myself. <laughs> Actually. You can see that they're fanning at the front here. Ah uh, yes, have a look at this. Stone, you want to come and have a look? We've got some uh, Nazanoff gland happening there. So the bee is fanning. Um, you can see that little, uh, it's a little gland at the, the tip of the Abdomen is pointed down and the, it's a pheromone that tells the other bees, this is home. So b probably because we're, we've shuffled things around, they're, they're fanning to say, hey, hey, home's here, home's here for the returning bees. And uh, they're fanning that Nazanoff pheromone to make sure the bees know where to go. 
Amazing. So, so there we have it. We've got time for one more question. Oh, fantastic. Well, it's actually a question for Mira. People like saying, now that you've split that hive mirror, um, will you leave it there or are you going to move it somewhere? And if you do move it, will you do it before you add the super? Oh, that's a good question. Um, so because I'm splitting this hive because a friend of mine wants to get into beekeeping, I will move it to her place. I will leave it here until I know that it's got a, a laying queen um, because she's a beginner and I want to make sure I give her a hive that's got a, a laying queen. But yeah, I won't. If I was leaving the hive here, then of course I would add the super here, but I will probably transport it um, once it's got an established queen over to her place. And then once it builds up strong enough for a super, she'll put a super on it herself. Great. I hope that friend is me. <laughs> Sorry, Trace. <laughs> You're on the list. <laughs> but there's people ahead of you. <laughs> there's people that always want bees, and that's a fantastic thing. And that's why I choose to do splits as a method of of uh, I guess in springtime rather than getting in there and trying to stop your hive from swarming just take splits there's always people that want those colonies if you don't want them yourself so there was a nice how-to on a walk away split and if if you are if you are attempting that and it all feels a bit daunting do get some help from either, either a friend or somebody experienced even better to to help you uh, guide you through the process you can also have a look at thebeekeeper.org where we have a whole lot of training videos we are put together with experts from around the world and that will guide you through step by step with um, well made videos showing you in detail and up close all of the things you need to look out for. Thank you very much for tuning in and if you've got things you'd like us to cover next week put it in the comments below and uh, each week we'll be covering something new so tune in 